We're so glad you're with us today as we worship God and as we remember that there is a promise for every problem we face. One of the promises we know today is he is Emmanuel, God with us. You are with me, what can separate us? You are for me, what can stand against us? Your love, it won't let go, I know it won't. Darkness, shadows, have no power over me. Fear is empty.
You have been faithful to a thousand generations. Thank you for your faithfulness to love us, God. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, Breathe your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. And all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leads the night and night. Earnings. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, ever ending, reckless love. Now is your foe, still your love fought for me. Thank you, Jesus. You've been so, so good to me. When I fell nowhere, you paid it all for me. Yeah. You've been so, so good. Kind to me, all oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I found this night and night. And I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away.
fight till I'm found at least the 99. I couldn't earn it, I just don't deserve it. Lord, you gave yourself away, and all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Jesus, we thank you. You came for us when we were lost, we weren't looking. We were loveless, we were broken. Yet you drew near to us because you are Emmanuel, the God with us. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for sending your son as a demonstration of that love for us. We remind ourselves again today, there is no length you won't go to, to demonstrate it again and again. We receive your love and we prepare our hearts now for your word. Continue to speak to us and remind us the truth of how you see us today. In Jesus' name. And if you agree, just say amen. And let's prepare our hearts for a message from God's word today. Hey, what's up, East Coast friends and family? Welcome to our Take Home online service, and I just want to welcome you. Thanks for being a part of this. And as you know, we're trying to make decisions as a church to step forward into uh, these different phases that Florida is going through. And uh, there's a lot of factors to be considered, a kid's church and all different things. And, and as we do that, the number one factor is that we want to honor God, number one, and number two, be a light to our community. And as we take these steps forward, uh, this weekend we actually did church in cars in our Merritt Island campus. We invited everyone to that. If you're finding this video on a Saturday night, you actually still have time to go on Sunday tomorrow to check that out. And uh, the times are 9, 30, and 11. You can check it out on the website. But each week we're assessing because at this point we don't know when phase two is rolling out. And the things that we're looking for is that we keep in line with what God is speaking to us by faith as well as being a shining light to our culture and our community as well as giving you the best option as a, as a person to, to be a part of church, to be a part of this community. Uh, our online services have been incredible. And one of the most important things that have happened in our online service is that we've been able to share this with lots and lots of people. So that's very exciting. You know, during the online services, we've had some incredible things happening. We've also had some wonderful gathering experiences. We've been able to gather in some small groups, and those are gathering more in person now, and they're, they're stepping forward into that. And so we're all ramping and rolling up to some future things. And be, be paying attention to our emails, to, to our website, and to our Facebook for more information on that. Now, we're going to get into our new series, and this is called Heart Tank. Heart Tank is all about God doing something new in your heart. And Heart Tank is a play on Shark Tank. And we'll get to that in just a minute. But basically, God wants to do something new in your life and something new in your heart. I would love for you to take this opportunity right now to share this with a friend on Facebook or YouTube or whatever platform that you use. Take a moment. This is an opportunity for you not to partner with us because we're giving an extra dollar and we're partnering with Second Harvest Food Bank to uh, bring more food to people. One dollar equals one family fed for a day. But it's also your opportunity to be generous with the Word of God and get this into somebody's life to encourage them. I'm going to go into our first verse today, and it's Ezekiel chapter 36, 26 through 27. And if you want to go there in your Bible right now, you can, or in a smart device, just check it out, Ezekiel 36, 26 through 7. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Would you pray with me now? God, I come to you and I thank you for who you are. Lord, I, I pray that you would speak to us on having a new heart. And God, each one of us could use something new in there. We could use something new in our spirit today. We could use something new in our mind. So I pray that you would bring that fresh to us, that word, that new mercy that's for every day. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. 
Now, Shark Tank, if you're not familiar with the show, it's, a, it's pretty fun. It's, a, it's loved by a lot of people. And the basic premise of Shark Tank is that people pitch ideas to investors. And uh, the investors on the show, like Mark Cuban, Kevin O'Leary, different people like that, they listen to your idea. And they decide, is this a good idea that I want to invest my money in? Or is this not a good idea and I don't want to invest my money in? And there's usually four or five sharks. And each shark is looking to invest. And each business owner is, is deciding who wants to partner with me. And it's a fun show. It's very creative. But what I found in watching the show is that I, something will show up. And they'll present it to the sharks. And I'll, I'll inevitably ask this question. Why didn't I think of that? Like, I can't believe so many things are created every day and so many new ideas come to the table and just really disrupts culture, disrupts society, and the new item shows up. And I think a lot of us have asked that question, like, how is that even possible? How did I not think of that? That is so simple. And uh, on the show Shark Tank, what's really interesting, and I want to share a couple of the items with you. I want to share the most successful item on Shark Tank they made about $100,000 in sales before they pitched on Shark Tank. And currently today, they have over $500 million in sales, just several years later. And it's called the Scrub Daddy. It's just a little tiny scrub that you would, apparently, it's hard when it's dry. When it's wet, it gets soft. And over $500 million in sales. But here's something I found more interesting and I think relevant to our talk today and relevant to our discussion is that actually the most successful item in Shark Tank history, nobody got a deal. No shark pitched a deal and really saw the value of it. And that's the Ring doorbell. It has what was up to more than 600 million in sales and sold to, uh, let's see, sold to Amazon for $1.1 billion. And no one saw the value. Like, who needs a doorbell with the camera on it? That's what everyone was thinking when it first came out. But now we're all thinking, we're so glad that we have doorbells with cameras on them. We love them now. And not everybody has one, but we, we, many of us probably couldn't see our lives without them. Yet at one time, we could not see the value of a camera and a doorbell connected all together. And if that's true for an invention... That, we, that two people could look at something and one person could see value and the majority of the world could not see the value in that, wouldn't that maybe be true for God? That he actually has new things to put in your heart that you didn't value before, that you couldn't see was worth anything, that maybe before you, th you thought it wasn't valuable, but when he brings it to you, you finally get a chance and you see it the way that God sees it. You know, inventors can create but you know, God is the most creative force in the world. He's the most creative being in the world. And don't you think he's got something new for you? You know, oftentimes we think, God, change my situation. If, if only you could change this weird situation that we're in right now, that would be great. Because I'll tell you, things are getting weird. They really are. Things are getting weird. You know, introverts are starting to miss people. We didn't think that was going to happen before. Extroverts are finding themselves alone and quiet. Uh, we're in the middle of, a, of the Florida uh, relaunch into phase one, and we're looking for phase two and all of these things where there's some places in, in our country that are completely shut down. We're divided in terms of our culture like never before in my life. I've never seen such a divide amongst states and the differences in the ways of life right now. Some salons are open. Some people are getting arrested for keeping their salon open. It's a very weird time, and it would be very tempting to say, God, I need you to change my situation. And the new thing that I want you to do, Lord, is, is, is change my circumstances. But I don't think that's really the way that God works. He doesn't want to change your circumstances. He wants to change you. He wants to change your heart. Why? Because he wants you to be successful in your circumstances. He wants you to shine like a light in the darkness. He doesn't change the darkness. He changes you so that you might be a light in this dark world. In fact, when you look at all the changes that's been going on in people's lives right now, most of them have been happening in the heart. We haven't seen a lot of circumstantial changes yet, but I've seen some pretty incredible things, and I've seen them in our church and in our community. I've seen some things like this. I've seen generosity has increased immensely for our church. 
In fact, we're empowering people every day to become more generous in their areas. And as a church, we're asking you to come up with ideas, to, to grab people, to, to get a team going, and we'll come in and equip you to do that work. And so our generosity has increased uh, immensely. You know, another thing worldwide that's actually changed is connection with people. It's changed drastically. In fact, more people are connecting on video and in Zoom. Like, I wish I had kind of thought of buying some stock in one of these, you know, video digital sharing uh, software platforms a, a while ago. Now I have no idea if it's a good idea, but I remember when this first kicked, it would have been a good idea because more people are using it than ever before. People are working from home like never before, but they're also connecting with friends and relatives and sharing the message of Christ like never before. Something that's very interesting that you may not know is in this day, in this age, prayer and the desire for God has increased immensely. And when you do the research, you look at Google search engine and a university called Copenhagen. They uh, did a research project, and you can do a search project yourself. I actually did it uh, right before this message just to verify some stats. Is that searching for prayer is higher than it's ever been since we could tell how much things were searched since 2004. In fact, it's by far double what it's ever been in the past. And Copenhagen University released a research project that said it's doubling uh, as COVID-19 has increased across the world. It's doubling at a rate of approximately for 80,000 cases, searching for prayer doubles, which means it's doubling about every two to three days right now. That search for God and search for prayer, people are hungry and they're desiring God. You know, generosity is a position of the heart, right? Prayer is a position of the heart. Connecting with people is a position of the heart. God wants to birth some new things. You know, there's good news in the middle of all of this. The good news is God wants to use you in the midst of all these circumstances and he's going to do this. He's going to do this through you. In fact, I want to show you a fun clip and something that we're producing right now at East Coast. Uh, we're producing a, a, a program called East Coast Good News, and this is some good things God has been doing. I want you to check it out right now. Hi, and welcome to Good News. I'm your host, DJ. And I'm Felicia. We are so glad you're here. If you came to this recording looking for some bad news, we've got some bad news for you. You're not going to find it here. Not here. It's all about the good news. Yep. Nothing in that cup. Shanna says, I have slept all the way through the night for the last three nights in a row. Sleep is good. Me too. Next is from Ashley. Ashley says, this week my husband and I made our final student loan debt payment, which means we are completely debt free. Way to go, Ashley. Proud of you. Debt free in 2003. How about this one from Diane? I gave a friend some water and toilet paper. Thank God. Thank God you did. We all love toilet paper and water, Diane. And it's hard to find some. It's true. I'm... You're doing the Lord's work. Amen. The next bit of good news is from Julia. Julia said that she just finished her bachelor's degree. Just now. Way to go, Julia. Wow. What, what timing. And then we have one from Felicia. This Felicia, it says, I was finally able to find the time to bake my son's birthday cake, something I've been wanting to do for years, but couldn't find time in my schedule. It's true. How old is, how, how old is that little? Three now. Three years without yeah. a birthday cake. First homemade birthday cake. Hmm. Where do you get the birthday cakes from? Where do you think? Publix. Publix. Best birthday cake. It's a pleasure to shop there. It is a pleasure to eat their food. This last one is from Jason. Jason said, I got engaged to the love of my life, Marie. Whoa, Way to Jason. put a ring on it, Jason. Incredible. We are so happy for you. Congratulations. I've been DJ. And I'm still Felicia. There's your good news. You know, as the pain is increasing in our world, God wants to increase and birth new things in our heart to make you stronger and more effective. What, what is the new idea? What are we going to pitch today? What, what, would, what would people invest in right now and see a value that maybe they didn't see before? Well, this is the idea that I'm going to bring to you for your heart tank. What would you invest your life into that in years from now you'd think back, I'm glad I did that. And that today is from Psalms 91, 1 through 2, 
And it's the word rest. The word rest. Psalms 91, 1 through 2. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. You know, I love that verse. And one thing I love about it, and I want you to be aware of this, when David says this, he says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. You know, as people are searching for prayer, you might be searching, how do I pray? Like, how do I grow closer to God? That might be a real question that you have. You could pray that line in that verse right there. You could say, God, you are my refuge. You are my fortress. You are my God in whom I trust. That is a simple prayer that you could put out to God. But what this all resides on is this word, rest. Whoever rests in the shadow, he will rest in the shadow of the Almighty, that who dwells in the shelter of the Most High God, right? And so in thinking about this, when I was about 11 years old, I was camping, and it was this yearly camp retreat that we did for the Royal Rangers, all right? Kind of like a Boy Scouts when I was a kid, but they had Christian values. It was a lot of fun. We learned how to make fires and, you know, tie different types of knots, and we loved to camp, and we learned how to be young men. It was really actually uh, incredible. They had code of ethics and different things like that. It was a lot of fun as a kid. And uh, we would go to this yearly retreat. Uh, it was a camping trip. And there were hundreds and sometimes even more than a 1,000 kids in one area in the, in the center of Florida. And we'd all camp, and they'd rent these thousands of acres, and we'd all be out there. And one time, uh, about 11 or 12, I was waking up at 1 or, 1 or 2 a.m. I'm not sure the time because I was, I was 11, and I was very unaware of what was happening. And they woke all the kids up, and they rushed us out. I don't remember the details, but they rushed us into a school. I don't even remember how we got there. I was so tired, I was probably half asleep the entire time. And we got to this empty school, and we all slept on the ground. And they told us that tornadoes are coming. There's a huge storm that we, they didn't, couldn't predict. And it came in and brought flooding and rain and tornadoes. And when we went back to the campground, it was crazy. Tents were everywhere. Uh, up in trees, and I mean, it, it, like tornadoes went through where there was like a thousand kids camping. It was it was insane. It was totally crazy. And here I was in my tent, in my shelter, in my place where I'm like, this is where I'm supposed to get some refuge. The reason why you sleep in a tent or in a house is because it's considered a place of safety, right? It's considered a place where you're not going to get rained on. The wind's not going to you know knock it over. Those type of things. But here I am in the middle of all that. It was all destroyed. And I had a bit of a sleepless night. I was a bit terrified, to be honest. I'll never forget it. You know, I think about my own life. I think I've, I've had some of those other nights, but they didn't involve real tornadoes. I don't know about you, but I've had other nights where I've been woken up by a little storm that's kept me up half the night. And it wasn't a tornado. It was a storm right here in my heart, in my mind. I had many of those sleepless nights. And here's what's happening in those sleepless nights. The one thing I need to help me solve all of the problems is being robbed from me, and that's rest. You know, you get better night's sleep, you rest better, you can actually do better at solving whatever issue it is that you're worried about. But what the enemy wants to do is he wants to rob us of our rest, and figuratively and literally and spiritually. So he's got us working when we're supposed to be resting. And then when it's time to work, what are we? Exhausted. Do you know, after a crisis situation... Uh, generally speaking, people lose about 30 IQ points. Why? Because we're exhausted. We're bare, we, can't, we can't sleep. We're, we're running a million miles. You guys have, may have felt this during this time of COVID-19 and all of this. Of, I can't seem to make decisions. What's going on? The enemy wants to rob us of our rest, of our sleep. But even our spiritual rest, even our soul rest, he wants to take this from you. And, you know, for some of us, rest, it's, it's a bad word. It's like, you know, I'll rest one day in heaven. That's what you think. And for some of you, rest has been a crutch. You know, it, you've twisted the word wretch, a rest. And we see that. We see people that never rest and people that rest too much. That's not what I'm talking about. And I'm not actually talking about sleep. I'm using sleep and storms as an example. 
of what rest truly is. Yes, we work hard, but we have to rest hard, but all of that must be resting in God and his mighty power working through us, right? What is biblical rest? God created the world, and the Bible says on the seventh day, he rested it, he rested, and he literally blessed that day and made it holy. What did he do on that day? He rested. It's really that simple. God rested on the seventh day, but he also created rest on that day. I thought, I've been thinking about this. He created rest, and he created a holy, blessed day. Even God rests biblically. What, what else is rest biblically? Rest is what you do to prepare to work hard. You actually work hard so that you can enjoy a rest as well. You've got to work hard to rest. If you don't work hard enough, you don't get to rest because you always have to work hard on your rest days because you didn't finish your job. I'm very familiar with that. It's called procrastination, right? But rest is also a time where you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor. The fruit of your labor. You work hard, and on a rest day, you enjoy Right? Rest is a position of joy. Rest is also a position of the heart. And this is where I think people get all twisted. Rest is not just taking a nap, and rest is not just a position of the heart. Because sometimes we can have perfect peace and perfect rest like Jesus did in the boat, in the storm. He's sleeping in the bottom of the boat. And he doesn't, he's not even waking up because he's not worried. He's not concerned. It's hard. Everybody's working. Everybody's going. But Jesus is sleeping in the bottom of the boat. And they come and say, Jesus, we're all going to die. It's not one or the other. It's actually both. Rest is a position of the heart, but it also has to become a position of a lifestyle, physically and spiritually, emotionally. God created sleep for a reason. It's so that we can reset. I mean, there are so many parallels to resting spiritually and resting physically. It's, it's pretty wild. When you rest physically, what happens? You repair. Your body, everything begins to repair. And it's in sleep that... People are saying that athletes actually find the most success is by having the best sleep. It's not all the supplements. It's, it's not all of this stuff. It's not all of the things you could take, but it's actually in your sleep where athletes have better performances. They're finding that that is one of the most critical keys. And I believe it's the same for our soul. We have to have a position of rest. When you go back, it says, Psalm 91, verse 1, how do we get rest? Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. You know, um, the word shelter in place might be the term of the decade right now. Shelter in place. I had no idea what that was in 2019. But I'm very, very, very familiar with it right now. But is our home really our shelter? Will we find rest there? You know, some people started saying, because Floridians, you know, we're, we get a little crazy sometimes. What if we're sheltering in place and a hurricane comes at us? What do we do then? Well, the key would be, where is your shelter? Is your shelter in your home or is your shelter in God? Because even if a hurricane doesn't hit you, I'm telling you right now, and everybody's familiar with this, storms are hitting you daily. They're hitting your soul. They're hitting your mind. They're, they're striking against your emotions. But when you dwell in the shelter of the Most High, you find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. You find rest there. So how do we put this in place in our life? Well, number one, we've got to rest in his place. And that's God's place. Where's God's house? Where's, where's God moving? You, you follow peace. You follow peace of the Lord. And two, you rest in his grace. You rest in his grace. You rest in his place. You rest in his grace. What is grace? Grace is very similar to rest, actually. Grace is unearned favor. It's an unearned gift. You can't earn it. You can't work for it. You can't make it happen. It's favor, which means it's given to you. You can't earn rest. You got to actually just rest. You got to stop, right? You got to stop working. Well, with grace, it's the same way. It's very similar to rest. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in my weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. We've, we've preached on this recently. And the idea is that you want power in your life, you've got to have rest. And you've got to rest in God's grace. 
His grace is sufficient for you. Grace is a kindness given in times of trouble, pain, anxiety, sin, weakness, and so on. That's what grace is. Grace is a gift to you. I love this quote from Mike Pilavachi. He said, when God put a calling on your life, he already factored in your stupidity. <laughs> I love that quote. I read that and I said, thank you, Jesus, because I, I mess up all the time. Yet God still put a calling on my life. Thank you, Lord. Make, it makes me feel so much better. Why? Because it's the grace of God. It's not an excuse. It's not an excuse to sin. It's not a license to do things that are wrong. But it's God's blessing and kindness on us that we don't deserve when we don't hit the mark, which every one of us is very familiar with. And how does the enemy really mess us up in the middle of the storm? You know what happens in the middle of the storm? He likes to come in and play some tricks on us. And I want to talk to you about a word that's really, I, I feel really important to somebody out there. And I think this drives people to do terrible things, including hurt themselves and hurt other people. It's this word shame. So when you sin and when you make a mistake and you do something that you're not proud of, God wants to put grace on your life and he wants to bring forgiveness in. He wants to bring healing in. And the devil wants to put shame on you. And what does shame do? Shame drives us lower. It puts the blame on me. It says, if I make a mistake, I'm pointless. I'm useless. I'm worthless. I'm no good anymore. Who will love me now? Who could forgive me? If someone found out, what would they think? These are real thoughts people deal with all the time. I've dealt with these thoughts. Shame on me. And then another form is shame on you. Oh, you're making a mistake. Oh, that's, that's, this is my time to point it out. This is my time to feel better about myself. I'm very good at this too. It, it's easy to point other people's mistakes out and put shame on them because it makes us feel better about ourselves and it makes us say this, at least I'm not as bad as them. At least I'm not like that sinner. We feel better about ourselves. The fixes for both of these, of shame on me or shame on you, is, this, is that word grace. It's receiving God's grace. It requires repentance. It requires humility. and It re requires a humility for yourself to say, God, I'm sorry, forgive me. But also humility to say, you know what? They're messing up right now, but I'm no better than them, and I'm not going to judge them. Am I any better than them as a person, as a human being? They're making a mistake. I'm capable of the same thing. And that puts us in a position to minister to somebody, to show somebody the truth, to show somebody through truth and love the way forward. But when we live shame forward, no one learns much from us. But when we live a life of grace and humility and truth, and we walk and rest, then we shine. Then we shine bright in the world. You know, ultimately, the Bible calls Jesus rest. In fact, there's many scriptures in Hebrews that talk about through, from the beginning, Joshua, the Hebrews, the Israelites, they're looking to rest, and they're trying to find rest in these different ways. And they couldn't find it. They couldn't find rest, and they couldn't find rest in that. But Jesus came to give us the ultimate rest. Because Jesus represents grace. You know, the Bible says that salvation doesn't come by works that anyone could boast. It comes by what? Faith in Jesus. Received by the gift of grace. That's it. You can't be a Christian without grace. And you can't walk the Christian life without grace. And no, this isn't a license to do whatever you want and say whatever you want. Humility and truth are very important in these things. And those are hard lessons to learn, as many of us have faced before. But none of it happens without grace. Jesus is our rest. Jesus is rest for our soul. When we can't rest physically and mentally, when we're struggling in our sleep at night, do you know what? When we have the rest of Christ, we, like Jesus, can fall asleep in the bottom of the boat and say, I'm going to bed, and I'm going to work on this tomorrow. God's got my back. I'm going to get me eight hours of sleep. 
Why? Because we take a position of rest in Christ, not rest in our own strength, not rest in who we are. It's Jesus' grace, and it's the person of Jesus that welcomes you into his family. It's grace that I would say I'll share this message with somebody else, and they would see that and go, I want that. I want that kind of love. I want that new thing. I'm willing to invest my life into that. In fact, if you want to give your life to Christ right now, I want to give you an opportunity. I'm going to pray with you. I want to share something with you. Uh, Right now, just a simple prayer. And you pray along with me. And if you mean it, you're giving your life to Christ. And the Bible says that those who call in the name of the Lord will be saved. This is your moment. Will you pray this with me? Just simply close your eyes and, and just tune it all out right now and just say this with me. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. I ask for forgiveness for my sin. Fill my soul with your rest. Give me grace for my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. You know what? If you gave your life to Christ in that moment, it's the best decision you've ever made. We just want to celebrate with you. We actually have people on our online platforms right now available that if you just click, your, click that button right there, it says raise hand. If you do that right now, it'll let us know that you gave your life to Christ, and we'll actually reach out and help you. We'll, we'll actually uh, pr- even pray with you if you do this live with us, or you can simply text Jesus anytime you watch this, day or night. If you send Jesus to the text number on the screen, it'll send it to somebody, and it'll let us know that you did this. You know, about 157 people have let us know since we've gone church, take it home church, right? Have, have given their life to Christ. They've actually let us know. Five people last week. How cool is that? You're a part of that. Let's celebrate with them and let's celebrate with each other. You know, right now I also want to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that have been happening as a church at East Coast. I mentioned this in the beginning, some of the new things that God has deposited in our heart, and that is generosity. And it's not generosity through leaders who are asking for help, but it's generosity through you. In fact, when we first talked to all of our small group leaders and our community leaders, we said, hey, do you have any generosity projects that we could support? A lady, a lady named Cynthia stepped up and said, I'm actually tomorrow going, we're going to 100 nurses in hospice care, and I've made these gifts, and I've done these things, and I've made these prayer cards. I would love the support. And East Coast, as a ministry, as we're called to equip, the Bible says, equip you for the work of ministry, we just added to what she was already doing. And as a church, we were able to go and get up to 100 hospice nurses, gifts, and just tell them that we love them. You know, sometimes we, we ask this question like, do, they re- do the nurses really need all of this? What, is this actually important? I want to share a perspective with you. A friend of mine got pneumonia last week, was rushed to the hospital, and you know, his wife wasn't able to visit him. So what did that mean? He's in that hospital by himself? No, the nurses, the doctors, the care workers, they're being his friends, they're being his family in that moment. Yes, they need this. They've, they're already under enough pressure to be nurses and doctors. Now, where, what are they doing? They're, they're our family and friends in these moments, and we're super thankful, and we're super grateful. We think about you, and we pray for you all the time. You know, a couple other things real quickly is our foster care families. We care a lot about them. In fact, we've reached out to foster care families this week. We did a great outreach um, just showing love to the community, and we also reached out to the central offices in Rockledge, uh, their service center for the foster care workers, and we blessed them as well just to say we love you, God loves you, the church loves you, Jesus loves you. You might be stressed. You might be under pressure. You might even be listening now. This We want to tell you that we love you, and your generosity matters in this. We've given over 150,000 pounds of food through our food pantry and in the last eight weeks alone. It's been incredible. You guys have been such a blessing. If you'd like to give to support and, and help people, you can give uh, on the, hit the give button on the, um, the platform, or you can text the, the number give or text give to the number below. You'll see right there on the lower third. And people as well have been mailing checks in and even started reoccurring giving. If you don't know what that is, you can get on the platform and figure it out. It's pretty simple and it's pretty cool. I'd like to close with prayer. And uh, after this prayer, 
we're going to play a video that our worship team made. We showed it last week, but just in case you miss, missed it, we thought we, you'd like to see it again even. It's, it's a song, Don't Worry, Be Happy, but we redid it, and we made it our own, and a bunch of people from our worship team uh, worked together on this, about 45 people. Our production team, I don't know how many, another 10, 15 people got together, made this video. It's incredible, but let me pray with you today. God, we love you. We thank you for who you are. You're so good to us. Lord, we, we pray that we would know what it's like to walk in your rest. To work hard, to rest hard, to be resting as the storms come around us. We'd still live in a position of rest. That doesn't matter if our shelter is taken out because actually our shelter is in you and it can't be taken out. You are our rock and we stand on you. We thank you and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Check out this video.
If you accepted Christ today, would you let us know? We want to celebrate that with you and we want to be able to give you resources because Jesus Christ living on the inside of you is the greatest decision you could make for your whole life. In fact, there's so much that's going to happen now that starts just falling like dominoes after that. And we want to celebrate and we want to help you and give you the resources to be able to do that. Would you please let us know right now? Yes, and if you've been keeping up with East Coast, you've hopefully been able to see some of the incredible things that your giving has done in our community. It's yes. been absolutely amazing yes. to see how your faithful giving has been able to pour into our teachers, into our hospital workers, um, so many different avenues that, that we've been able to be generous because you've been so generous. Yes. Um, so please continue that generosity with us. And if you're wanting to um, actually do some of that serving with us out in the community, Come on, come be a part of it with us. There are so many opportunities for you to serve and get involved, get your hands dirty with us. Absolutely, it's a beautiful thing. This is the church and we're doing this and we're changing the world around us. Hey, we just heard an incredible message. We've had some amazing time in worship and we encourage you as a family, you're together right now. Would you take some time to reflect, take a moment or two to just sit as a family and think about the word, think about and just, revel in that moment of worship a little bit longer and enjoy your family. And we will see you next week at East Coast.